Welcome to the New Covenant Marriage God's Way. And we started this, um, this month of June talking about money and marriage. So this is our part two. We want to also answer the questions that we receive. So for those that may be watching for the first time, I am Dr. Jewel Williams, one of the lead pastors of Abundant Life Worship Center. And I am James Williams, also co-lead pastor of Abundant Life Worship Center. All right. So today we are going to go into some scriptures that we have chosen. If I open the right document um, and then we will um, kind of talk about, you know, money, marriage, and then again, answer the question. So our first scripture is um, Matthews uh, 16 and 26. So um, let us go ahead and read that. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world, wealth, fame, success, but forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. So that was Matthew 16, 26. So what, what is that kind of speaking to you about in terms of um, money and marriage? Well, it is basically helping me to make a decision. Um, as we live and breathe, we have opportunities to pursue wealth, fame, success. But the scripture challenges us to make a decision in terms of what will be our primary motivations, what will be the things that we go after, what will we spend our time on, and, and really helps us to weigh whether or not you know, the pursuit of success and fame and wealth is really worth our soul. Yeah. And thinking about our soul being something that is eternal. Yeah. It's already there, whether we get fame, wealth, or success. Right. Um, but are we willing to to forfeit that right. in, in the pursuit of it? And so it it helps to give you a guideline in terms of where your priorities are, where you spend your time, and and uh, making sure that you don't sell your soul right. in exchange for whatever the wealth, fame, or success that may be tempting you right. to uh, pursue. And so that's what it's really kind of saying to me. Um, and and then the second question, you know, like what what will a man give? Yeah. Because in our society, it's very easy to um, see the trappings of, of wealth, fame, and success, and feel like that's what you want, and uh, have a by any means necessary yeah. approach to doing that. So Matthew, excuse me, reminds us that. Um, you really need to ask the question, is it really worth it? Yeah. And I think what's, what he, what's important, you know, um, about just really kind of making this scripture real practical is it, it when it says, what would a profit? What, what, what's the benefit? How will you be benefit as a married man or woman? How will you be, how will your pursuit of gaining this money, um, how will that, benefit you as a family um and so whatever you do and i mean we think about on the practical side if you take job a over job b how is that going to benefit you what what is that going to do for your family your family structure is it going to allow you more time with your family or is it going to demand or, or fame or success it really is not only just talking about in a sense of i'm going to gain all of this stuff but is this what you what you're going after, how is it going to add value to your family? And, and, and because we're talking about marriage and money and relationships, is making that few extra dollars worth missing those moments with your children that you can't get back? Um, and so when we really look at these things, and it's not necessarily an easy place to, to make those decisions, but it's one that I think as a couple, you have to sit down and, and really weigh the cost together to see, is it worth you, you know, doing this? Um, and certain things work for different couples. So you have to kind of really evaluate that for yourself. For me, 
you know, there were opportunities and jobs and stuff that that you could have taken, for example, that would have caused for you to travel more or for you to actually be in one location and on, us in another. And that mm, eat, that was a no for me. Um, I don't want to be that kind. I didn't want to be a parent, you know, by myself. And that's the way it would have felt for me. Now, for somebody else, that may work. Um, but again, it all is the dependent on the individual and the couple. And so they have to make, you know, those kind of decisions together. Yeah, I agree. Um, it is a joint decision, and um, and that's something that's really important to do. Yeah, because it's easy sometimes. I know myself personally. I can think very kind of tunnel vision. Yeah, and be like, look, well, you know, I can make two times the amount of money I'm making right here if I, you know do four days in X city next to a company that really wants to pay me a lot more than the companies here. And so that that's definitely a consideration um, and a way to kind of approach making the decision. And then the other piece is, um, you know, sometimes it's easier to cut corners or um, build um, unholy relationships with individuals in order to make money, or it's, it's easier to, it can be easy or, or appear to be um, easy, I should say, because sometimes the easy way out um, will land you in jail. Or, um, <laughs> yeah. The easy way out could help, could potentially help you. I mean, for the easy way out could cost you your life. Yeah, um, which because, is easy at the end yeah, of it. Exactly, exactly. Because there, there was always been, you know, ways to make a whole lot of money real quick. Yeah. Um, but the risks were jail. The risks were, you know, putting putting life in danger. Yeah. Um, or just just lying and and doing things in a, in a um, in in an un un you know in a, dishonestly. Yeah. Doing things dishonestly, and so those are other things that um, you know can help not help, but would cause you to, you know, really forfeit your soul because you're not, mm-hmm. you're not living in turkey. And then and, and even just, just adding to that before we go to the next scripture is the other piece about that is, you know, this forfeiting. So you're forfeiting, if, if your pursuit is just for this establishment of fame, wealth, that if that is your only pursuit, you're going to forfeit, something else has to give to make way for you to be able to go after whatever that pursuit is. So not only are you, you know, potentially forfeiting the time with your children, forfeiting the time with your spouse, but then also you could be forfeiting your time for God's calling, God's mission. How are you leading your family? How is your family come together? So this, this money, while we know, I mean, we already know, we're not saying don't work. Nobody's saying don't have a job. Cause you know, that, that's not, that's not what we say. So we know you got to have a job, you know, and there's nothing wrong with being successful, but right. what the, the thing that we're really just really cautioning is make sure that the decisions you make aren't kind of the, I'm, I'm going to make this big money or this, that, and the other without counting the cost to make sure that your pursuits are right. And that you're not forfeiting, you know, cause sometimes your thought is I'm going to do this for my family, but then you're actually forfeiting the time and the things that are more important for your family. So, um, the next scripture is Luke 19, 26, and it reads, Jesus explained, I tell you that to everyone who has, bec- has, because he valued his gifts from God and has used them wisely, more will be given. But for the one who does not have, because he disregarded his gift for God, even what he has will be taken away. And so really, when you look at this scripture, it really is talking about, you know, a value system to me. It's really talking about what are you value when when you are putting your values in the right place, um, then you know, it says because you valued his gifts from God and he used them wisely. So so money, if we look at it this way, money is a gift the, the, to have a job, to be able to, you know, have creative ideas, to to have the ability to create and to go and to, you know, even um, create legacy. We have to look at it as a gift from God. And so because it's a gift from God, we then have to make sure we use it wisely and that it does honor God in what we're doing. But if we disregard that this is a gift from God and we just kind of haphazardly do whatever we want, then we may not really be valuing 
the position, the opportunity, and what God has given us for the greater good, greater good for our family being provided for, but also greater good um, for the kingdom. And so really the question that I had is what value do you put on money and your marriage? So if we understand that money is a gift from God, we have to put a certain um, value to it. It's, it's for purpose. It's for use. We honor it right. We use it right. We don't, um, you know, aren't frivolous with it. I have to admit that I had to repent on several levels of that because early on in our marriage, I didn't value money the way I should have valued it. I use money and cards and stuff like that to kind of soothe some stuff inwardly. And, and in doing so, what I actually was doing was not putting the value on my marriage because then our marriage had to struggle through because we didn't have enough money or because we, we, we fell into these places where we couldn't take care of things. Um, and so we really just have to look at those decisions we make around money um, and how we value them. What are your thoughts? Well, what I get from this scripture is that, you know, we get, we have time, talent and gifts and um, we have to not take them for granted personally. Mm -hmm. uh, God gave them to us, so we should use them for God. And then to the extent that we are able to garner resources, money, you know, access to resources, power, and the, and the like, mm -hmm. that um, we need to invest those things in, in fruitful endeavors. Yeah. You know, um, in, in, in the Bible, you know, the individual that just kind of hid it and buried it <clears throat> was not was not god was not pleased with that mm -hmm. his, his master wasn't pleased with that so yeah. you know if i have resources i need to invest them wisely and, and, and do it in a way that's fruitful if i have time and talent i need to you know they were given by god i need to use them for the you know in in, in godly purposes and um and just you know take value you know value what god has given and then also value the fact that he's given us a marriage. So, you know, there are things that I would use the resources God has given me to invest in our marriage, right? to invest in, you know, our children, to invest in legacy, to invest in things that would be, um, be fruitful and, and, and helpful for the family to grow and, and develop. And, and some of those things, for example, is, you know, I, I, I believe that it's okay as a family plan vacations. Right. Save for, plan for. Um, actually, you and I, I, I want to share, we were just talking um, about taking this kind of respite, taking this rest time of, I don't know what you said, like every couple of months, actually, every quarter, every yeah. quarter, really taking a time and saying, you know what, we need to get away, get away from the computers, get away from work and to go. And, and, and I mean, even if you can't afford to go somewhere, you still take a vacation right. if it's a staycation as they call it but you take <coughs> some time and one of the things where money is important is if we are managing our money right then we can begin to save for we can say okay we want to go to so and so we want to go to florida we want to go to this place or that place what's the cost we're going to count the cost we, we understand that god has given us the resources to be able to save so we can start to save and do those kind of things. So I really think, you know, when we look, talk about money, it's not just this don't spend, don't do, but it's have the right motivation behind your money and, and what you're pursuing, do it with the right intention, go to right means, but then also use it to add some, um, some value, add some value to your life, make some um, romantic yes. getaways so you can go somewhere, have some times where it's just you and you and your husband, and then you can have times where it's family vacations. Um, but you know, you we got to be able to unwind because when you go, 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 you will find yourself fatigued, and then that sometimes can then lead to you mismanaging your money because now you're using money for other stuff, you know, other ways. Of, well, I'm just gonna buy a bunch of stuff because I'm feeling depressed or this, that, and the other. Um, but when you plan some things out, I think that just really um, is important around, you know, talking about money and money issues. Um, and the last point I want to make is before we read the next scripture is I think also one of the things that's important about how we look at money as a couple is what do we teach our children about money? 
if they see us fighting about money, if they see us arguing about money, if they see money as a stressor, guess what tends to happen? Money will become a stressor for them. But if they see a family that's able to sit down and discuss, we've got bills or we've got this, but if they see how you handle money, um, that also just sets them up for, I think, a better opportunity on how to handle um, money well. Yeah, I think it's important for them to learn how to live beneath their means. Yeah. How to invest wisely. Yeah. And um, and and build things that are of, of, of value. Yeah, yeah. So, so we're going to talk about a little bit about uh, more about the investing for kids as we go on, but you can read the next scripture. Malachi 3, 8 and 10 reads, Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings you have withheld. You are cursed with a curse, for you are robbing me, this whole nation. Bring all the tithes, the tenth, into the storehouse, so that there may be food in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you so great a blessing until there is no room to receive it. Amen. So essentially, you know, the way I look at this is, you know, God is the provider of mm -hmm. everything that I have. Yeah. And so I need to be a cheerful giver of yeah. a tenth to kingdom work. Right. That can take on many forms mm -hmm. it can be local ministries it could it, it's 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 home mm -hmm. it's it can be ministries you know that are geographically far away um and and so this to me just really underscores how to have a um, a gracious heart be a cheerful giver and 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 be grateful that you know God has given us so much. Then why are we trying to hold on to things and be like, no, I can't do this. I can't do, you know, X for you know the kingdom of God. And right. So this that that's the way I kind of look at this. Um, to be grateful that I have an opportunity to give back um, to kingdom work and and be and be um, be good with that. Yeah. And, and, you know, I know, you know, a lot of people don't like to hear this Malachi 3, 8 and 10 verse because it's been kind of the beat you over the head to make you tithe scripture. But I'm looking at it really from a different perspective. God is really challenging the people in this scripture about their their heart and their mind for giving um, um, outside of themselves, um, for giving to what has been important. And that is, you know, kingdom work. Um, and so something you said that I think that is key for us, part of kingdom work is not only that we are willing to, to, to give to our local church, but also take it to say, you know, what else is God building up? Um, you know, he wants us to build up not only our families, he wants us to build up his kingdom. Um, and so I look at this in more than just, you know, are you giving your, your tithe? Yeah, tithe. So we're not talking about it from that perspective. I'm using this to look at it from the point of what could we possibly be holding that is essentially robbing our family? And one of the things I was talking about is I think also not only just the we we're talking about with children and teaching, you know, we should be able or we should take our children while they're still young and sit down and teach them about how to invest money. Give them a little a little something. Teach them how to earn. I mean, our kids used to have to, they had assignments, they had chores. They had to do things to earn something, certain things. And so there needs to be these places where we're really teaching our children about giving from themselves and being cheerful in doing and adding value to the family, adding value to the kingdom. Um, to me, that's a small teaching on getting them used to dealing with maybe the, the small version of the kingdom in our home, but then applying that as they get bigger. So I'm learning how to give my 10th back. I'm learning how to save my 10th. I'm learning how to take my, you know, if I got a dollar, I'm learning to take my 10 cents and put it in the offer. So I believe some of this is, you know, 
teach them now so that it's not we we teach them these lessons so that we're not robbing them later if you if you know what i mean so i just thought that was something that was um important as well you have any other thoughts or no i think that's great if you can um, press on okay so james 1 17 said every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and coming down from the father of life with whom in no variableness neither shadow of turning and so really um we've been talking about money this this month in our, our, our two sessions we've been talking about money and marriage and really the whole process was really you know I, mean, I don't know if necessarily went super deep but just really some basic concepts around one make sure that um we look at our current financial situation and whatever it is um even if you're not where you want to be we have to learn how to start saying lord i thank you for the gift of even being able to have what we do have we might need more but we want to learn how to start being thankful for where we are um and then we want to also come to the place of, of acknowledging you know what god what we do have it is a gift from you so teach me how to steward it how do i steward this well how do i steward the income that comes in and it really doesn't matter like who does the bills because families work different i'm the one that writes the bills um but still I don't make these you know decisions all by myself these are certain things that we do together and then even after i do the bills we sit down and upgrade our 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 um spreadsheets together i say hey this is what's in this account and this is what's in that account what are you you know is there some things that i need to be thinking about um so we we make sure that we deal with our finances under the understanding that it really is a gift from god and then how do we make sure we are honoring him with what we have what are we using our money with are we buying stuff that would be dishonorable to him um are we using our finances in ways that are not integral um so are we making sure that that everything we do even in the spending of our dollars is something that would then um really bring honor back to God. What's what's your thought? I mean, I agree with all three of those situations. I mean, all three of your points. One is that be grateful. Um, two is to ask for wisdom, to be a good steward. God is the one that provides and he's the one that can help us steward these, these resources. And then um, the third piece is, is to make sure that it's doing something that's fruitful. Um, you know, I, I love to invest in people I love to invest in in things that you know are are going to be helpful be it somebody in their development or somebody that's launching a business um and, and especially on things where people are doing something for more than just selfish gain right um i'm always i have no problem earning or building businesses to to earn resources and at the same time, I'm all, always looking at, okay, what's my motivation and what's the motivation of the individuals that I'm either partnering with or, or working with. So I'm in agreement with all those pieces. And so I also wanted to just say this, this is a couple of, because it's still about money. Um, number one, I wanted to say that um, as a couple, you, I feel like you have this added extra support if one or both want to do like entrepreneurial type of things if there's other things that you want to do outside of like a a, a corporate job um type of situation our our marriage works that way in that you have always had a job i mean you've worked majority of our marriage i mean other than one little time where you were like unemployed for a very short period of time but you've always had a job i on the other hand i've worked in a corporate or you know outside of the house but um you wanted me to be home and so that was a decision that we made now i'm gonna be honest i didn't make it all that easy the lord had to tell me would you please be obedient your husband wants you home with the kids so i came home but i've always worked even at home i've done different kind of things i've i've had basic businesses i've worked um on i was a teacher so i did online um schooling and teaching so i've always kind of had a job it never was the same level of income as yours but I, my whole point was that you always supported that 
Um, and so even around money, you never said you're not bringing in the same amount of money that I am. So you need to go and get a different job. And even when we had financial struggles, you never said, Jewel, go get another job, do this and the other. And so my whole point around that is as a couple, when you make a decision, what is vital for your family, for us, you felt it was more important that I was available for my girls, for our girls, than it was for me to have a job. And so we managed, we made it, praise the Lord, because everybody is just about grown and gone. Um, but that worked for us. Somebody else, if you both have to get a job, you both get a job. But it needs to be something that as a couple, you make that decision on. Yeah, I agree 100%. Uh, marriage is really you know, it's beyond just a, a partnership. It, it's, a, it's deeper than that in yeah. terms of how each person's um, needs and the needs of, of the family need to be taken in consideration right. when you make decisions. I mean, that's just the way it works best. And, and again, I always think about it's easy for me because sometimes, Jewel, you would ask me, like, well, what do you think? I said, well, I can look at this two ways. Mm -hmm. I can look at it purely on what I want to do you know, which is selfish and, 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 and won't take into consideration the family, but I'm not trying to forfeit my family, yeah. you know, just to, you know, satisfy some selfish desires. And I think people have to really come to terms with that. You know, if everybody wants to go their own different way and, you know, make a decision without taking into consideration your spouse or taking into consideration the children, and even sometimes taking into consideration your elders, because, you know, in, in, in these days, sometimes people we're, we're connected with supporting or in some way supporting, you know, our elders, you know, we may be supporting um, other individuals. All those things need to be taken into consideration yeah. when you make decisions. And so that, that's the big difference between, you know, being single, I'm just doing everything, whatever I see, want and do, I just go ahead and do it yeah. and being married. It's a, it's a different decision making process. And when, when those things aren't taken into consideration, you know, you, you can definitely run into some major problems. You're already going to have troubles and challenges yeah. together, but it's better to try to work through those things together than it is to, you know, just I'm going for my own and do my do things my way. Yeah. So we got we had a, a question before we answer the question. Um, I'm gonna let Pastor James answer this question, but I just also want to say uh, another point around this concept of money. Um, you mentioned it. Well. I also suggest as couples, you look at if you're not if this is not something you're doing right now, look at how you could do it. one, which, like I said before, how can you teach your children how to invest? And if there's some ways that you can give them money so that they can begin to invest and maybe invest for college or something. So start doing that. The other thing is, it are if you have parents that are seniors, are you able to bless them in any kind of financial way? It might not be a lot. Um we decided together that that was something we wanted to do. And so we actually made that a kind of a line item in our budget so that we can bless um, my mother-in-law and my dad because they're both, you know, retired. Um, we wish we could do more, but we're just excited that we can do what we are able to do um, at this point. So like if he gets, you know, a bonus or something like that we give we we give them a little bonus and so you know just kind of think about that because i think about the scripture that even says you know we should should kind of provide for the widows and the orphans and so you know while they may not be you know my dad isn't a widow but still he's my he's my dad he's senior um he's retired and so this is just some thoughts around money how can you again because this is not just about us and our legacy but how are we you know even providing for um others so just think about some ideas that you can do as a couple to increase what you do with your finances so the question we had actually came from pam and sapphire and they said do you think that a married couple should have a joint account a separate account or both what what are your thoughts around that well i think it's something that they need to talk about number one um i don't have a prescription to say one is better than or you must do this i don't have a prescription for people um i think they should talk about what you know what you what do you need for the family mm -hmm. because you are a family so at some point you know if you you know have accounts you need something to take care of what the family has committed to right um whatever housing you know just everything that you need from a living perspective right 
um, what a, a thing to consider is whether or not um, each or one or the other or both individuals would um, want to manage their own um, account so that they can do certain things, um, you know, potentially like for the other person without having to go say, hey, <laughs> you know, let me get a couple of hundred dollars because I want to go buy you a, <laughs> a gift or something like right. that. Um, I think you need to take care of home first, number one. Right. And then um, to the extent you have resources and it makes sense that you have um, you have a separate account whereby you can do some things um, that will be totally in line. It's not like you're trying to sneak around with the money or anything like yeah. that. Um, that will be in line with what you all would um, would want to do, you know, mm -hmm. because it, it's not unnatural for people to want to have some autonomy with some portion of the resources. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of look at, I start from the family first needs, then, you know, what might be useful mm -hmm. for each or both of the other individuals to have a separate account. Mm -hmm. I tend to, you know, I've heard horror stories of, um, this is my money, yeah. you can't touch my money, I don't want you looking at my money, I'm not even talking about that. If that's yeah. what you're dealing with. There's something deeper. Yeah, you mm -hmm. need to. It's not just about the the account and the money. It's about do you have have you established some some level of trust? Yeah. Are you going to be transparent about what your desires are and what you and how you're utilizing resources as yeah. a family? Yeah. Uh, because while I may earn, I, I can't just say I got all my money over here. I'm just going to pinch you some off. Yeah. You know that, that those are those are deeper issues, and, yeah. and it, sometimes what happens is these deeper issues, lack of trust, lack of transparency, not really wanting to have the hard conversations about, you know, how we're going to utilize all of the resources that come into the house. Um, you know, those those need to be tackled, and then you can figure out, okay, well, how should you do the, you know, do the accounting around yeah. this? And I would also recommend that this, these are the types of things that you, if 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 individuals are thinking about getting married, talk about money. Before yes. you get married, yes. what do you think about this? Should you know how? Do, how should we, if we go to this next level, how should we manage our resources? Because it, it's easy to fall into the my this is mine, you know, get out of my stuff. Yeah, that's contrary to 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 the marriage, and you know that might be not the way some people approach it, but that I, I think that that's that's one kind of. Um, way to approach it where you build in trust and transparency yeah you're making decisions that are in the best interest of, of both parties and you do have the ability to have something separate yeah um that you can use some good wisdom wisdom and discretion on utilizing yeah and i think um you said something that i think is really key and and people date and i think sometimes two vital things that they don't really talk about is money is one and then sometimes they don't really well it's a couple of things but they don't always talk about money i'll just stay right there but they sometimes don't really talk about money and not just talk about it but you know kind of really understand because when you marry that person you also marry their, their credit history you marry whatever debt they got that comes with them um so you don't want to marry somebody and then find out they got you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars in debt that you knew nothing about and now or you know money they debt and stuff they can't pay for because now you're, you're you're coming together and i think sometimes that's when you get into that this is mine or that's your bill this is my bill um kind of thing and so really those are some things you talk about on the front end and 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 really make uh credit and and uh, financial um things an important part of you know what you talk about uh and again you know to answer that question you know answer that question about joint accounts whatever works for the people you know you have to right. find out what works for you and it and i would just have to say if there's some some tension around you got a separate account for me that don't i don't necessarily think that just speaks to money that speaks to where in your relationship did, did mistrust come in? Has the person in the past done something with money that made you feel un, 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 you know, insecure with them? So those are some real deep questions that you have to talk about. Um, I know from a practical place, 
like I do the build. Um, and so I used to tease my husband all the time because, you know, at work, he would be buying like stuff and you got a dollar fifty, a dollar here, two dollars. Yeah, I was like, look, you need your own account so you can take all those things so I don't have to keep up with, you know, all of those little things. Because then I have to tally how much you still have left. I was like, no, here you go. I tell you what, you have your own account. Then I don't have to tally that. But I do know that he has the account. If at any time, if I want to know what's in the account, I can say, hey, what's in your account? He's going to show me. Um, but I also like the reason, like he said, because, you know, if he wanted to do a surprise for me, it was hard because he had to come and ask me, is this you know, is this available or that available? This way he has his own money, which is pretty cool because I've gotten some pretty cool surprises uh, that I didn't know about. Like I got my, what should I do? My, um, my iPad, I got my iPad and, you know, I didn't know nothing about it. So, you know, I mean, just those really cool things that you can kind of do that you have those accounts. So, and I also have a separate account because of, for business purposes, because I don't want my, our regular joint account bill place for that money to, to kind of um, intermingle. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, we hope today and this month's lessons were, were at least kind of some getting started in conversation. So for July, we're going to be talking about intimacy in marriage. So even like we did now, as you watch this, if you have any questions, either about what we just talked about or any questions that you want us to answer in our uh, in july for our intimacy and marriage um sessions you can put those in the comments you can email them to us um, however you want and we will answer them in the recorded message so we're going to have a word of prayer and we say thank you for joining us pastor Amen. james dear father in the name of jesus we thank you lord and pray that the people that hear are able to hear from you, that they are able to access your spirit for wisdom on how to manage, how to have a great relationship with money and resources, how to ensure that they are doing what would be honorable and right in your eyesight as it relates to the financial resources and money that you provide them in their marriage. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. And Father, we just say thank you. And for those that may be having some financial struggles, we pray that you would give them the wisdom, the blueprint and the strategies on how to build financial um, stability in their families. I pray for those that need jobs. I pray that you would open that up for them. Uh, Father, we pray that you would give them what they need to work together so that they can build legacy for themselves. And if they have children for their children and for future, and even to also build the kingdom and to add to the kingdom. So we just thank you in Jesus name. Amen. amen. God bless you. And thank you for joining us. Bye -bye.